This is how I go from a collection of references to an Obsidian note with references, exported to Microsoft Word with the citations and the bibliography already done for me. I'm using Zotero as my reference manager for all of the information, clipping the papers and grabbing the citation information. Then I'm using Obsidian to do all of my note taking, whether it's linking notes, servicing notes, diverging, converging ideas, all of that is done inside of Obsidian. And then I'm exporting to Microsoft Word for the final manuscript because no one accepts Markdown documents for some reason. Hopefully that changes in the future, but that's what I use Word for. I'm going to assume you have Zotero set up. If not, have a look at my Zotero 6 video and that goes through the setup. But when you go to the tools section and then go to the add-ons, I actually have two add-ons that help me with my Zotero workflow. One of them is the Better Bibtex for Zotero and the other one is the Zotero Obsidian Citations. I will leave a link to the Zotero Obsidian Citations in the description because I found it hard to find, but once you've got it, you download it and then drag it over to Zotero like you would with all the other add-ons. So scroll down, click on the download link, click on the most recent one, find the .xpi file and click on that. Go Tools, Add-ons inside of Zotero, bring up the Downloads folder and then drag that over to the Add-on section and then it will ask you to restart Zotero, but I'm not going to do that because I've already got it in. Once you have the two Zotero plugins, you then also need one Obsidian Community plugin. So you're going to Obsidian, Community Plugins, Browse, Citations, and then you'll need to install Citations, which is just pushing the Install button inside of the plugin. You can see I've got it installed here. I have it activated. Now, when we go into the settings, a couple of decisions need to be made. First, you need to decide where you're actually going to store the literature notes once you've made them. And what the plugin does is turn all of these into potential literature notes inside of Obsidian. So if I go into my notes and sources, you can see here are a load of sources that I have from inside of Zotero. And to clarify, all of the highlighted points in this page are from the annotated note that I've exported from Zotero, which I explained in a previous video. So for the literature note folder, I have notes and sources. So whenever I create a new literature note, it will go into this folder, very similar to the templates plugin. Then when I scroll down, you can see I haven't changed the site key setting. I haven't changed any of these settings, but I have changed the template. So this works exactly the same as the normal Obsidian templates, but is specific to literature notes. And what this does mean is you can actually use the information from Zotero. So all of these pieces of information are from Zotero and you can bring them in automatically in this template. So you can see this is what I have. I have the year. So it's going to put the year in the YAML at the top of the page. Then I have a tag because that's how I tag all of my notes. I have the title of the paper, then an author string, which puts all of the authors of the paper next to one another. And then I have the URL. Next is we actually need a document for this plugin to have a look for. Now I store mine in my personal folder and it's called mylibrary.bib and that comes from Zotero. So if I go to file, then I go export library. You can see it's using that better bib latex format. So if you come down here, you can change any of the formats. I use better bib latex and that matches the citation database format. And then I'm going to click keep updated. So it means it automatically updates the file when I add a new paper in, push OK. And for this example, I'm going to store it just in my vault. So this is my note collection vault and I'm just gonna store it right here, so save. Now you can see in my file explorer, I have a file called my library and it's a .bib file. You can see from the extension. And if we click on it, it brings up this massive long file and it's huge because it has all of my Zotero citation information in it. If I add a new paper to Zotero, it adds it to this document. For troubleshooting later on, if you go to edit and then go to preferences, you will then see the better bib text tag at the top. Now, when we go to the automatic export, these are the two exports that I have. I have the one that I've just created, which goes to note collection. And then I have the one that I'm actively using, which I had before this video. Now, because both of these automatically update, if I go into my Obsidian and delete this file, it will automatically update to recreate that file if I add a new paper. So I'm actually going to remove this export now because I don't want two exports of the same thing. Are you sure you want to delete the auto export? Yes. So the exported file is still in my Obsidian, but it won't auto update, which means when I delete it, it's gone, it's finished. Now going to the better Bibtech settings, I'm going to format the site key, which is basically an ID, an identifier for any item inside of Zotero that could be an article, a book, a video, anything. So I have author, short title, and the two means I have the first two words of the title, and then the year. That's my site key format. 
But if you want something different, you can go to the Better Bibtex document and literally use any of these in any order you want inside of that setting. Again, I'll leave a link to this website in the description below. So if we click on an item in Zotero, you can see here is the citation key. We have the author, then the first two words of the title, and then the year it was published. And the reason the citation key is important is because that is how the citations plugin works into Obsidian. So if I now use my hotkey for the citations plugin, it then brings up a search box of basically my Zotero. So if I'm looking for the self-assessed paper, you can see in Zotero, this is the title of the paper. Here is all the information that shows up. So I can search for the title of the paper. I could search for an author of the paper. I could search for the year of the paper or the site key if I know what it is. Then when I push enter on my keyboard, it is going to automatically create the note and use the site key as the title of the note. So if I middle click on that note, you can see there is the title, there are the authors, this is the link to the paper, this is the tag that I use, and here is the year, and that follows the template we have in the citations plugin. So going back into the citations plugin, there's the year, there's the tag, there's the title, author, and the link, and the note title is the site key. If you add information or change information in an item that will change the site key, so if I add the date in here, you can see it's automatically updating the citation key inside of Zotero, or you can right click better bib text and then refresh bib text key. That won't change the name of the note inside of Obsidian. So if there is a conflict, you may need to go into Obsidian to find the site key and then change it so they match. Going into the command palette, the citations key actually has a few different hotkeys. So you can see open literature note, I don't have one, insert markdown citation, which is slightly different, I'll show you in a second. Then you have refresh citation database, which we don't need to do because we've done that with the automatic export inside of Zotero. The insert literature note link, which is the shortcut I literally just used, and then insert literature note content in the current page. So the literature note link makes this a backlink to the page. You can see we've got the two brackets. Now I've used the markdown shortcut. It's given me the same window. I push enter. Now it's put it in as markdown. There is a difference because this one only has single brackets. So this doesn't link. So if I go into this page, you can see here are the backlinks. We have example note one and knowledge one because I've actually referenced this paper inside of another note, which is knowledge. Uh, this has only got the backlink reference. A valid question might then be, okay, why do you need the markdown version? That comes to the Pandoc export, which I'll go through in a minute. Now, if we go inside of the tool setting in Zotero, you can see Zotero Obsidian Citations Sync Tag. And what that means is whenever there is a note created inside of Obsidian from the Citations plugin, it's going to add this tag. You can see the, the note tag, it's creating that automatically by sync. But you do need to push this button, the sync tags button, to update any new note that you've created. In addition to that, you can see my Obsidian has the example note up. If I right click on this paper and go open Obsidian MD note, it's going to direct me to that note. To set that up, you go into tools, go into the preferences, and you can see this is the same source I have for the citations plugin inside of Obsidian because this is where all of my notes are stored. I use the default file filter because I've never had any problems with it. I match notes based on the better Bibtex site key because that's the Zotero plugin that I'm using. Then when we go into the advanced features, I've then changed the name of the tag because I want it to be an emoji just like all of my other tags. I then only match to my library because I don't want the uh, combined libraries that I'm in as well to have those things. Uh, and then I have path as recommended. If you want the Zotero tag to show up here, what you need to do is right click, assign color, and then it will give it a position. I believe there's 10 inside of Zotero as a limit. Uh, the color doesn't really matter because it's an emoji. If there were words, it would show as green words, but I have an emoji, so it's, uh, it's set up there. The export part from Obsidian to Word uses Pandoc, which is something you'll actually need to install on whatever device you're using. I have it on my computer. So once you've installed it onto your Windows device, your Mac device or Linux device, we can then move forwards. I know this looks confusing, but as someone that has tried the plugins for so long inside of Obsidian, this is actually the easiest way to do it. So I'm going to walk you through how to use the command line with Pandoc. First, we need to say that we're going to use Pandoc, so we write out Pandoc, and then inside of quote marks, we need a location for the file that we're going to change. So mine is in my E drive, the note collection, notes, working. Now, it's not called knowledge because we're using the example note, so I'm going to change this to example note. So you can see in my documents, I'm in my E drive, I'm in the note collection folder, and this is the example note. It's showing as a Word document, but that's only if I want to open it as a Word document. It is a markdown, you can see markdown document there. 
Next, we need to give Pandoc bibliography information, so that file that we exported from Zotero, the My Library bib file, we need to give it a location for that. So, dash dash bibliography, saying to use it. Then we need inside of the quote marks the actual location of what's going on. So, for me, it's inside of my personal folder. So inside my file explorer, this is my library, my Zotero library that's automatically updated from the settings we did earlier in the video. But now Pandoc needs to know what sort of citation style that I actually want to use from this information. So I'm going to use citeproc and CSL. Don't ask me what they mean, I just know they work. And then inside of quotes, again, I need a location. Now this could be a link to a GitHub repo, or you can use one of the styles from Zotero. If you have a unique or obscure citation style, you can go to citation style language slash styles. Again, I'll leave a link in the description. Click on whatever the style is. Then you can open it up as a raw file. And then what you want to do is copy the address line in here and paste it inside the quote marks inside of this part of the command to make it look like that. What I actually did was went to Zotero. I went to edit preferences then went to the site tab and you can see here are the citation formats inside of Zotero already went to the Harvard method because that's the one that I use style editor and then I saved as so I saved this file which is very similar to the file you just saw just from the github repo but I saved this inside of my vault so you can see underneath the mylibrary.bib we have the CSL file for the Harvard referencing style which is what this is directing it to. It looks almost exactly the same as the one above except this is the file it's looking for rather than the library.bib. And then the very last part is basically saying where do you want to put this file? So this is saying use Pandoc and have a look at this file. Use bibliography information from Zotero and this is where it's located. Use a citation format which is located here. And then we want to put that file in this location. So for me, I just put it inside of my note collection vault. But I actually want to rename this. Now I'm going to put all of these together. So I'm going to get rid of the empty spaces. And this is where you'll see the difference between the backlink formatting and the markdown formatting in the export. So if I go into my command line and I just do a copy paste of what I've written, push enter, and it didn't work totally on purpose because I didn't accidentally name the file location wrong. I have the wrong file location. So I'm going to get rid of working, get rid of notes because it's not actually there. It's inside of my main collection, which is here. Now when I do it, and push enter, you can see there's no error line and it's created the example document right here. So if we bring them up side by side, you have the backlink reference here, you have the markdown reference here, you will notice the backlink note has added square brackets, which is the difference. You have all of the code and then this is the citation, the full citation of this particular paper. So what I've done is brought in a paragraph from my research proposal note. I'm still using Pandoc. I'm still using the example note because that's the one I'm in. The bibliography is still the mylibrary.bib. The site is still in the same location, the Harvard style. And I want the note to be called example note. So copy, paste, enter. And there's the example doc. And you can see it's got this line of code. Normally when I do an export, I don't have a line of code inside the page, but this is an example. I've added a references title at the bottom of the page. So all of the bibliographic information goes underneath the reference title. The bolds have been exported, but because this is from my note, I'm not too fussed because I'm not actually writing it up. And then we have all of the information in here. Now, because I'm using backlinks and not markdown citations, we have these square brackets in there. And when I have citations next to each other, I have all of these brackets in the middle. So what I do is I use control H, which is the shortcut in Word. I can't zoom in on this, but that's all of these. So that's the open bracket, the two square brackets, and then the closed bracket. And I'm going to replace it with colons space. And there were two of those locations. So OK, then I'm going to replace all square brackets and replace all and then the other square brackets and replace all. And now I have a document with the citations and I have a bibliography at the bottom. If you see a warning site proc error, what that means is the document you are trying to export has something in there, a site key in there that hasn't been referenced in the bib library export. So this doesn't match up with something in my Zotero. So I'll go into Zotero and I can see I'm referencing this paper, but there's a 2006 on the end of this. There isn't a 2006 on the end of this. Now, when I do the exact same export, it works fine without the warning. A similar error can happen with the tag sync, so tools and then trying to sync the tags. If I do this, you can see there is one site key that doesn't quite match. So I'm going to save. What this is doing is saving that document so I can refer to it in a minute. 
I'm going to save it in my Obsidian note collection. I don't want to save the JSON file. Now I'm going to open up that file that I saved inside of Obsidian, and this is the site key that's currently incorrect. So what it's doing is it's found this inside of Obsidian, and it's trying to match it to something inside of Zotero, but it can't find a match. So you can see I found this inside of Obsidian, which is here at 116 blah blah blah, but inside of Zotero it doesn't have the stress bit at the end. So I can change something in the Obsidian or change something in the Zotero, either one works. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the site key from Zotero and paste that into the name of the note in Obsidian. Now you can see there's no note tag on this item at the moment. I go to sync, everything works fine and now the note tag is on it. If I right click and go open MD note, it's then going to open up that note that we've just changed. Now the citations plugin inside of Obsidian works with any Zotero item, so I'm actually doing that with videos and podcasts and blog articles as well. So my system is changing to use this workflow more and more and more. And if you're interested to see anything in my notes, have a look at the link in the description below because it's all on publish.